Hi, everybody. My name is Darlene Rondo, and I'm Vice President Best Practices for Leonardo's Online Merchandising Group, and I'll be your host for today's special event. Welcome to everyone around the globe, and I can tell from people sending in their questions that we do indeed have an international audience today. And so to those for whom it's the middle of the night, a special thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping items before we begin. First, we're going to be recording the webinar, and at the conclusion of today's session, we'll be sending you a thank you for joining us email with a link to the highlights video of this session along with the full recording. I see that many of you have found the questions dialog box, so please, as we move through our presentation today, please send in your question, and we'll answer them as we move through our discussion, and if we have time at the end, we'll address some more questions as well. We're also going to be tweeting during today's webinar, so please feel free to join in the conversation at hashtag LeoWebinar. Now I'd like to introduce our first guest, Hamed Youssef, who, is also, who also goes by Joe. Joe is the Executive Vice President of Corporate Development and Marketing for Amadeus Hospitality. Joe has over 21 years of executive experience in travel technology, distribution, and marketing. Joe joined Amadeus in 2006 and has held multiple executive positions at the company during this time around the world. Prior to this, Joe worked for several global chip companies, including American Express Travel, Showtime Network, and Canoe Travel. Joe holds a Bachelor in Business Administration with a major in Marketing from the University of Cairo and completed postgraduate studies in Executive Management at Canfield University in the UK. Joe is certainly well versed on the topic of travel and mobile technologies, and we're really thrilled to have him with us today. Welcome, Joe. We also have another notable guest with us today, Anatoly Polyakov. Anatoly is the owner and innkeeper of Heart of the Village Inn, a beautiful nine-room property in Shelburne, Vermont. Together with his wife, Rose, they took ownership of this property, a converted Queen Anne Victoria house, in May 2015. Since then, they've overhauled their website, playing up the historical charm of their property. The Heart of the Village Inn has a five-star rating on TripAdvisor, and they received their Certificate of Excellence in 2015. Today, Anatoly is going to be sharing with us the results he's seen since launching a mobile website for his property, which are pretty significant. So stay tuned. Welcome, Anatoly. And as always on our webinars, we like to conduct polls to get the audience's sense of where you're coming from. So the first poll I'm going to launch is, we'd like you to answer this question. I don't have a mobile website because I'm unsure as to what an optimized website means. I don't have time. I don't have the budget. I don't think it matters. Or I have a mobile website, but I want to improve it. So if everyone could weigh in on these answers, um, that will help us understand where you're coming from. It also helps us develop educational materials to help uh, that further um, uh, help you achieve further progress with your uh, mobile website. So the majority of you have voted, and it looks like by and large, in fact, 91% of you have a mobile website but want to improve it. So thank you for uh, sharing that with us, and we will continue with our presentation. So to help set the stage for this webinar, I'd like to start by quickly looking at the influence of mobile technology in the travel industry today. There's obviously a lot of planning that goes into travel, and people are increasingly turning to their devices to help. In fact, according to Google, 40% of U.S. travel sites visits are now coming from mobile, and by the end of 2016, Skift has predicted over half of online bookings in the U.S. will be completed on a mobile device. That's up from 43% in 2015, and it's expected to be almost 60% next year. More broadly, Skiff found in its State of Global Travel report last year that mobile bookings 
accounted for 27% of all hotel bookings in North America in 2015. In Asia Pacific, it was 27%, and in Europe, the number was slightly lower, but still significant at 21%. It's clear that mobility is no longer a trend. It's here to stay, and hotels who don't have a mobile website are really missing out on huge direct booking potential. What's interesting with the rise of mobile is how it's reshaping consumer habits, including the travel shopping journey. According to Google, we check our smartphones on average 150 times a day, spending up to 175 minutes just browsing around. And a separate study by Google called How Micro Moments Are Shaping the Travel Customer Journey was released last month. And this study suggests that mobile has created what they're calling micro moments in the customer journey. And these are instances where people go on their phone for a small task that needs to be done immediately, making those moments what is called intent rich. For travel, Google breaks these micro moments into four categories. The I want to get away moments, time to make a plan, let's book it, and the fourth one is can't wait to explore. And what happens in these moments ultimately affects the travel decision making process. So people start uh, the travel process dreaming of a trip. So this is the I want to get away moment. So people are looking for inspiration. They haven't yet decided on their destination or accommodation. In this phase, mobile optimization and visual content is really, really important. According to Google, 60% of destination searches come from mobile devices, and 54% of leisure travelers say that photos of the destination are important in making a decision as well as travel-related videos. So you can see that having a mobile website that can load images and video quickly is really key. The next phase, time to make a plan happens after people have chosen their destination. They're formulating a plan looking for the right dates, flights, the place to stay, and all the things to do while they're there. And Google's micro moment study found that 70% of smartphone users have used their mobile device to conduct this type of research. And one third have discovered new travel brands while doing so. So what's important during this stage is, number one, that you have a mobile website, and secondly, that you're providing the details travel shoppers are looking for, like room type stories, room availability, amenities, how close you are to nearby attractions. Then comes the let's book it moments. These are the people ready to commit, and they're hunting for a good deal and they'll use multiple devices to do this. But what's interesting from this Google study is that 46% of these travelers with smartphones may decide where to book on mobile, but they ultimately end up booking on another device. And the reason is travel shoppers worry that they aren't finding the best deal or making the best decision when they're booking on mobile. Another problem with mobile limitations is that the booking process may not be supported properly or it's too slow, or it's simply too difficult to do and complete on a mobile device. According to a separate Google study in 2015, 40% of the mobile users won't even wait three seconds for a website to load. That's just three seconds. So your mobile website, if it doesn't load quickly or doesn't support that booking process, you're really risking losing that travel shopper uh, to to them changing their mind or we're still them booking with somebody else. And then finally, we have the can't wait to explore moments. These micro moments happen once the trip is already underway, which means that mobile isn't just important in the lead up to the reservation, but also once the guest arrives on property. And these people are searching for things to do. In fact, that Google study in 2015 said that 85% of travelers decide on activities only after they get to their destination. And that smartphone searches at hotels for on search terms like things to do near me increased by 30%. So it's important on your mobile website to help the guests build their itinerary and share with them things that they can do once they arrive. 
So with this setup, I'm going to hand it over to Joe, who is going to walk us through how mobile is going to influence the future of travel. Joe, over to you. I think you're unmuted now, Joe. So let's see. Hang on, audience. We're just having some. Looks like Joe is self muted. Oh, there Am you I go. unmuted oh, now? You are unmuted now. Yay. Hey, perfect. Well, Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody around the world. A uh, pleasure for me being here with you today as well. Uh, thank you, Darlene, for the invitation. Uh, always a pleasure uh, working together. Uh, hopefully today I will be uh, sharing some insights of how mobility is changing the way we work, or rather say, really, how technology is redefining the way we do business as we once knew it. Of course, if you have any questions, uh, please post them, as Darlene mentioned, and I'll be more than happy to answer them uh, towards the end of our session. Uh, perhaps I'll start off with uh, a few words about Amadeus and who we are. We can move to the next slide, please. Thank you. Amadeus uh, is a global uh, technology provider. We have been ranked by Forbes in 2015 as the world's largest 10th software provider in the world. We have processed more than 566 million bookings in 2015 with over 1.2 billion travelers that have been boarded uh, using our different system components across the world. Uh, our mission and purpose is really to shape the future of hospitality, uh, sorry, of, of travel. Hospitality is more our, our niche, uh, which I belong to, but our overall uh, purpose is obviously to shape the future of travel. We work together with customers and travelers, and we believe that we are in a very unique spot at the intersection between travel and technology, allowing companies, again, to use our technology uh, to meet their customers' requirements and needs. Uh, right from the very first moment of the traveler life cycle, so Darlene, you've touched on the, on the different moments uh, that Google uh, referred to, and we pretty much have the same philosophy. At all stages of the travel experience, our solutions will help our customers deliver more choice and better services to their customers, the traveler. And in 2013, we conducted some extensive research uh, via what we call the Embase Traveler Trends Observatory, which is an external exchange platform to better understand the traveler trends of the future. And more recently, we actually commissioned a Future Foundation to develop the Future Traveler Tribes of 2030. If you have not heard of it, you can obviously go to the Embase.com website, download the study for free from there. But that study primarily looks and seeks to identify those different tribes of different traveler segments across the world from a demography, uh, from te technological drivers, and ultimately how they are impacting the growth or decline of travel. <clears throat> uh, again, according to Google, Darlene, you've, you've mentioned this, uh, but I think it's a very, very interesting statistic that I wanted to repeat as well. Uh, on my slides here about how the industry is changing from desktop research. So according to Google, again, we're, we're citing Google here, desktop sales have been dropping for the past few years. It, it's no surprise. And in 2014, 30% of all search that has been conducted came from mobile devices. In 2015, that number doubled to 60% of all searches coming from mobile devices. And with a staggering 51.8% of bookings being projected to in, in 2016 to be achieved or completed via a mobile device. These are significant numbers that we have not seen in online adoption previously when, when, when the online bubble burst uh, more than 10, 15 years ago. It took many, many, many years to go from 2% to the 50% adoption of online travel. Unlike in mobility, it's just frog leaping the whole industry or the trends that we have once knew it. Uh, again, Google is obviously changing the whole search algorithm. Uh, if we can move one slide, Darlene, please. Thank you. Uh, Google is changing the way uh, mobile search and the way we market our products. So the whole mobile optimized or mobile friendliness uh, theory will take a huge key role in how our mobile uh, websites are being ranked. 
And mobile friendly means a few things that I think we should take note of. It means that how we use the text sizes in our mobile experience that are readable without having to zoom in, how we offer content that fits the screen without having to scroll or zoom. Again, these are unnecessities in a mobile experience. Uh, the spacing between links, uh, as simple as that. How do you space between links so that you can allow user-friendly tapping to the right link and doesn't have to you know, uh, tumble down? Uh, flash will not be a commonly used uh, uh, experience in mobile devices that would uh, rate negatively when you look at the algorithm of calculation of how Google would rate your mobile uh, friendliness. And finally, uh, the study suggests that sites that are not mobile enabled tend to lose one third of their traffic, right? And, and Joe, um, I think this is a really important thing to zero in on. In the poll we just did up front, 5% of the folks said that they don't understand what mobile optimize means. So for the folks in the audience that uh, chose that as that, their answer, what Joe just described are the characteristics of what makes a mobile website optimized. And so what struck me about what you just said, Joe, was that they're going to, if you're not mobile optimized, you're going to lose a third of your business. That's huge. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and more striking, Darlene, is like more than, the study suggests that more than two-thirds of the Fortune 100 companies are not considered to be mobile friendly. Huh. So there's a lot of work to be done. Yeah, so if uh, your property has a website that isn't optimized, it sounds like you're in good company. Uh, a lot of... Uh, and these are big companies we're talking about. Absolutely, absolutely. Yep. So in, in, in this next section, perhaps, I'd like to uh, share some thoughts uh, that we, we think are important, like the top three takeaways for hotels to create an effective mobile strategy. And according uh, to Forbes as well, so we, we, we've done some research uh, and, and read what Forbes have to do and say here, and I think it's a very, very simple and lean uh, canvas of how you can optimize your mobile experience. The first step there is to offer a website that is designed specifically for access on a mobile device, right? That goes without saying. The mobile site should be designed just for mobiles. When the user accesses their website from a mobile device, the user should be automatically redirected to the mobile version so that they can ensure that the user has a great mobile experience. It's as simple as that. Mobile websites need to be designed in the compatible way with a variety of mobile devices, not just looking at one manufacturer or one uh, operating device. It has to be multi-operating devices and multi-manufacturer uh, capable. The second tip is using location-based services to provide offers, which is the second biggest, I think, uh, takeaway uh, from this. This involves offering your users relevant information, and, and I'd re-emphasize the world relevant information by understanding Again, what is a useful product or a service while they are visiting or near a particular location on your premise? Allowing your users to opt in for the different location-specific offers will ensure that it would be highly targeted audience and result in higher convergence and thus higher revenues for your uh, estate. And so, Joe, uh, there's a question from the audience. Uh, um Selma from the audience uh, wants to know, do you have an example of a uh, location-based service, uh, an offer that could be used uh, using this sort of uh, technology? Well, I think some of that depends on technologies as beacon technologies, uh, where you can identify where a guest is in a particular location of your property. So if I'm hanging in the bar, uh, the beacons will uh, offer me uh, you know, the happy hour uh, promotions that are available in the bar at that particular moment, and I can opt in to take the promotion and drive more traffic to the bar between three to, three to six, right? That's just one example of, of how uh, location-based services can be optimized. No, that's a, that's a great example. Uh, thanks, Selma, for asking that question. And to the audience, keep sending in those questions as we move through our discussion, and we'll continue to uh, tee them up as we go. So back to you, We Joe. love questions. We do. Right. So last but not least, really, is to understand your audience mobile habits so that we can create the best experience for them. What percentage of your audience is accessing your site via mobile device versus a desktop? 
What devices are they using? Is it a tablet, a smartphone, or is it both? Are they interchanging? What activities are they doing on your site? Right? And what content are they really accessing by topic and by format? Are they looking at more video content or are they looking at you know, articles or thought leadership or what is more attractive for them so they can create more relevant content? Again, content relevancy is the key word for optimizing. Yes, and I think uh, a point to underscore about that is we use devices differently throughout the journey as, as we talked about, right? So we're going to be using our phones at certain times, and so uh, uh, putting that into context, what am I doing at the time? So if I'm on my phone and I'm driving, then having a click-to-call feature on your mobile website is going to be really important, right? If your um, website is being accessed by an, uh, an iPad, for example, then that may not be that important a feature or a desktop, for example. So I think uh, accent, accenting uh, what you're doing at the time uh, is, is helpful to understand so that you can serve up the right content and the right functionality when the when the guest needs it most. Absolutely, Darlene. Absolutely. So uh, again, last here, um, like having a mobile optimized site basically will drive the following benefits. In, in our view, it will make it easier, obviously, for your guests to use and book your uh, mobile website. It will drive great awareness for the property pushing search results higher for guests looking for hotels and converting into actual bookings, easily finding the information that the guest needs because you're putting the relevant information from availability, price, room type, and services available to book while on the site and using your mobile device is, is a key component, increasing bookings and hence revenues again. Again, I cannot emphasize the importance of location-based services. Uh, again, marketing on-site services, increasing usage by guests, and does return on investment. So that is an investment that you should not walk away from. Uh, embracing mobile first mindset means really, uh, again, adopting it with your own company code of ethics and work environment. It cannot be just uh, preached for your customer, well, we don't have that internally. And when it comes to understanding how our customers use or want to use their mobile devices to interact with you, it's not enough to ask, although you should do that. Get out there. Watch them how they interact with their devices, right? Look at them in the wild, interacting with your mobile strategy or lack of thereof. Make sure that your business shows up on a mobile-friendly location services and review sites like Google Maps or Yelp. Explore options of advertising on mobile devices. It's not for everyone, but it might be fit for you. And there are new options popping up every day. Building an app may or may not be the right fit for your company, but it is worth analyzing it. More and more, what used to be done on an app can be done on a responsive mobile website today. Again, in some cases, an app makes more sense, but don't just wait for everybody or your competitors to read their apps and then sign in that you're going to do the same. Look what's best for you. So I'll take a breath here, perhaps. I have uh, one of my colleagues, uh, Jay Lau, who's the product marketing uh, manager uh, for many of our guest-facing applications. And Jay, I'd like you perhaps to talk for a minute here about how we've optimized our own solutions so that they are mobile optimal from a user experience perspective. Sure. Uh, thank you, Ahmed, and good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to everyone. Uh, just, as Ahmed had said, I'd like to just take a few minutes to discuss uh, mobile apps for the hospitality industry and how they benefit the hospitality industry as well as its customers. So uh, DirectBook uh, is a solution that enables small group meetings to be booked online by planners without having to reach out to the venue sales staff. So the location, the function space, date, menu and items, and guest rooms can all be booked online. Direct Book actually solves a huge challenge for the hospitality industry. Uh, the industry has sales teams that are skilled in finding and negotiating and closing large group events. But small groups events uh, that have non-negotiable rates are often set aside or not given the attention they deserve as sales teams are pursuing the larger opportunities. 
DirectBook is a solution uh, that makes sure that revenue opportunities from small group meetings are not lost or ignored. So collaboration is a hot term today and Planner Portal improves collaboration between the planner and the venue during the planning and execution of the event. Planner Portal pulls information directly from the sales and catering system so planners always have real-time access to information about their event available at any time from any location and on any device even when their venue contact isn't available. All event related documents are available in Planner Portal and a planner can make requests for changes from within the app at any time, even on the day of the event. And all collaboration between the planner and the venue staff are tracked and saved to ensure that they're on the same page about an event, so no detail is overlooked. The last uh, solution I want to mention is uh, Amadeus Hospitality Diagramming, and that's a room diagramming solution that helps venues um, sell function space and create the setup diagram for the um, function space. As a mobile and enable solution, Amadeus Hospitality Diagramming en enables venue staff to tour the property with a planner and have access to the app at all times. So imagine a scenario where the venue staff member and a planner are standing in the function space under consideration. Amadeus Hospitality Diagramming enables the staff member to create a room plan with a desired setup option on a tablet to help sell this function space. If the planner wants to see the room with a different setup option, the room plan can be updated in just seconds. This plays a big role in helping sell this function space because it helps the planner envision their event in the room. And once function space is sold, a final, highly detailed and accurate room plan can be created to direct the event staff in setting up the function space. This helps to eliminate costly room resets because um, of the confusion that might be caused by what the planner actually wants and what the event staff thinks they want. The result are better executed events, happier planners, and more opportunities for future events which lead to more revenue. So all of these solutions are available today and they can be used as effectively on a mobile device as on a desktop PC. They're all designed to help hospitality organizations generate more revenue as well as work more effectively with their clients when planning, managing, and executing events. So let me go ahead and pass this back to Ahmed who will finish up. Thank you, Jay. Appreciate it. So I'll, I'll try to just like drive the message back home on how we see the future of travel and hospitality in particular. Tomorrow's travelers will want a more personalized way to travel. It's all about personalization. They want to be able to search for travel experiences that will be unique to them and only them. Be it business or ledger, it doesn't matter. They'll want a local knowledge. They want advice from a fellow traveler about their trips and how to share their plans with friends. Tomorrow's travelers will want the world to be joined together around their particular needs. They'll expect that their journey to be one of the single smooth experiences from thinking of where to go, or buying the ticket, or arriving in a hotel, then reaching to their final destination. Finally, travel companies are realizing that true long-term business sustainability requires only considering commercial, not only considering commercial and economic needs, but also making a positive impact on society and the environment that we work and live within, both locally and globally. So we see that tomorrow's world is personalized, connected, and sustainable. And that's it for me. Thank you. Thanks, Joe uh, and Jay. Uh, very. Uh very interesting and insightful guidance on uh, how Amadeus views mobile and uh, clearly you guys have your heads around it. Um, so just to recap what Joe shared with us on what makes a good and effective mobile strategy, create a website that is purpose built. That is to say, understand that the website will be accessed from a mobile device, which in turn will drive different behavior than when it's accessed from a desktop. As I said before, you know, the whole click to call scenario when someone is accessing your website from their from their phone when they're on their way to a destination. Serve up the right offer at the right time using location-based logic 
And then lastly, knowing the mobile habits of your guests will enable you to provide a more personalized experience so that you can connect to them emotionally and on a deeper level to secure those valuable direct bookings. So thanks again, uh, Joe, very uh, great information that you shared. And we have some questions that have come in and we'll save those till the end. So uh, with that, I'd like to reintroduce Anatoly Polyakov. And Anatoly is going to share with us his specific experience at Heart of the Village. Anatoly? Uh, hey folks, uh, thank you Darlene for the introduction. Um, thank you Joe and Jay for extremely interesting insights. Um, obviously a, uh, uh, a great deal of knowledge there um, that may be applicable to a smaller property like ourselves. Um, and uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to uh, everybody in the audience. Uh, as, uh, as Darlene said, uh, I'm, uh, my name is Anatoly Payatov. I'm a uh, um, I'm an owner and operator uh, of a uh, Heart of the Village Inn, which is a uh, fairly small property in uh, in uh, the grand scheme of things, but it's uh, fortunately in a very pop uh, popular destination in Vermont. And uh, my wife Rose and I have owned uh, the uh, property for about a year and a half now, and uh, uh, we wish we knew so many different things that we know now. Some of them uh, may be new to you today um, from this webinar, and some of them uh, may be already in the past uh, for you, and uh, um, still will probably resonate with what you've experienced. Um, so um, I guess without further ado, a uh, short uh, snapshot of uh, where the property was when uh, uh, my wife and I purchased it. Um, the, uh, the property was converted into an inn in mid-90s, and so it's, uh, it's always been a uh, very popular uh, uh, destination point, uh, not only for, um, for travelers who plan to, uh, to come to the area for um, sightseeing. Uh, Shelburne Farms and Shelburne Museum are just, just the two uh, of uh, several major attraction points in the area, but also a uh, random traveler that travels on a whim that we've experienced uh, is becoming a, uh, a trend nowadays. So at the time, um, the property was a very traditional, very classic uh, Victorian uh, bed and breakfast, uh, and uh, not good or bad, uh, but it's just uh, it was more uh, of uh, more of a classical approach versus uh, what my wife and I envisioned it as um, um, a lot more vibrant, a lot more modern, and a lot more technologically equipped. Um, another. Um, um, Factor that uh, that we uh, wanted to uh, to deal with was the uh, the online presence for the uh, property. So not only was this a very classical and sort of old school property itself, but the website also was uh, while very informative, it was extremely text heavy and it was not really um, driving that uh, experience that travelers nowadays expect. And uh, sometimes. Uh, it's uh, it's good to be very flexible and adapt to the ever-changing uh, situations uh, and, uh, and, uh, and trends in the in the travel industry. Um, you can't be all things to all people, but you know if uh, if there's something that you can offer to your guests that uh, will make you stand out without sacrificing possibly your reputation, that's that's a good thing to do. So um, I personally remember going on the websites that belong to the inn at the time and just essentially dropping. Um, Dropping the uh, the site visit and uh, focusing on something else, um, simply because it, it just was not not mobile optimized. And uh, again, um, Darlene and Joe and Jay uh, mentioned that a number of times. Um, if if it, the site is not visual, if it does not present well on a mobile device, be it a tablet or a cell phone, uh, what have you, um, it does not capture the uh, site visitor's attention in under three seconds, um, you just essentially lost a potential booker. So that's something that we want to change. And uh, um, I think the next slide will sort of give you an idea of where we are right now. And I'm glad, uh, Anatoly, you mentioned that because uh, Dalipa from our audience wanted to see an example of uh, a mobile friendly site or a mobile optimized site and I think you have the perfect example here. 
Thank you, thank you. And uh, we we do what we can. And obviously, it's a uh, it's a genesis. And uh, uh, the website that uh, was built for us by Leonardo um, uh, was uh, definitely a great find uh, from uh, from research and so many different options. Um, and frankly, uh, those of you who are smaller property owners and operators, you know how how busy you are with day to day tasks, and you do not always have the time. To, to do the research, and uh, one thing we, we kind of, in retrospect, are thinking right now is that you can do research, but if you don't know what you're looking for, you won't find it. So at the time, um, uh, we, we had no idea about Leonardo's existence, and uh, from what we know now, it, it launched uh, shortly before we acquired the property. So we wish right now we found, uh, found the, uh, this provider at the time, but uh, we were there right now. So in the meantime, um, Realizing the need for a uh, website to be a lot more user friendly and more more mobile optimized, and I'll touch on that in a, in a couple of minutes from my experience. Um, we we hired a couple of college kids, and there, there's all sorts of other services out there who helped us greatly with, with creating very very simple and uh, very very visual and uh, um, effective way to present information. It wasn't necessarily the uh, the top of the line uh, style of the website, but it worked at the time. And and as we uh, grew as innkeepers and uh, and also um, um, 21st century uh, business owners, we we found other solutions and uh, we kind of segued from one to another. And so um, there are several different ways, or two two major ways from our experience that a website may be mobile optimized. One is that it would be responsive, um, meaning it's it's Built around the same structure um, for both uh, desktop uh, and laptop presentation, but it also adapts once it understands that the call to uh, to the website is made, and not a phone call, but a uh, a request for the uh, for the page load is made to a website from a mobile device, uh, a uh, a more mobile uh, friendly or adjustable uh, page view will be served. So this is what we have right now on uh, on the screen. This is this our mobile optimized responsive way. There is also an adaptive way um, of building a uh, mobile optimized website and it's a lot more involved and it's, it's, uh, it's probably technically a lot more uh, complicated. Uh, so a service would be a little bit um, more costly, I guess, to uh, initial upfront investment. But the website will be built around the most popular screen sizes, et cetera, et cetera. So that, that's another really good way to, to present information. We chose the responsive design simply because that's what fits our needs at a smaller property without um, um, cutting too much into our ad spend. And so uh, we've heard so many, uh, so many interesting insights from our guests um, and essentially travelers who looked at our website and uh, would either sort of in retrospect during their stay compliment us on the website or not, not really compliment in the early days um, or give us a call and say, I'm looking at your website. It doesn't make sense. Please help me, and so we take it from there. So having having the website uh, captivate the audience's information and show them that this is definitely worth a second look if they don't have enough time during their current mobile moment um, is, is extremely essential. And uh, uh, being able to connect with your guests if they need to call you right away or send you an email right there from uh, from the website that's extremely essential. Um, Another uh, bullet point that um, I would like to touch on is that the responsive sites, um, and responsive not just in the template, but mobile optimized sites, they do need to tell a consistent story. Um, when a potential booker, a traveler, is, is planning their vacation, planning their trip, um, and they're looking at your website uh, on a desktop after their initial mobile visit, or maybe coming back to their mobile device during their uh, lunch break or whenever they have a mobile moment, um, the website needs to be very consistent in, in visual presentation, in, uh, in textual information. There shouldn't be any discrepancies, and obviously there shouldn't be any lag time um, while doing page loads, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so what we see right now, having, uh, having had a very extensive uh, amount of data pulled from our Google Analytics from um, as far back as a year and a half ago to now, the, the overall mobile views just went uh, up from almost zero when the site was not mobile friendly to 50% uh, uh, traffic uh, 
um, versus desktop. Wow, Some of the bookings quite a, come, uh, that's quite a leap in just 60 days. It's it's amazing to us, and that's uh, it just it's just the right thing. Uh, we we wish we had that before, um, and um, it's technology is amazing when it works, and it works in this case, obviously. Um, and so, um, Anatoly, just a, a note, you know, back to the poll that we did up front. Ninety-one percent of the people on the call today said that they have a mobile website. So I would encourage everyone who said that they already have a mobile website to put it to the test and to actually see if it's responsive or optimized as you've been talking about and so go to heartofthevillage.com from your smartphone or from your tablet and compare that to your own website and you'll be able to see um, you know apples to apples is your website truly optimized so thanks for sharing that Anatoly Absolutely. Um, one of the uh, important uh, parts, obviously, of uh, online bookability is having the, uh, the right uh, booking engine that works for you as well. And uh, we, we have a booking engine from an uh, a, uh, um, external provider, a third-party provider, uh, that is not native to this website, but it's compatible. It works really well together. Uh, uh, there are different reasons why we chose to go with that booking engine, because it does offer a very extensive functionality from obviously uh, great presentation on the page uh, between mobile and desktop to uh, to meta search capability where we can uh, we can translate our rates directly to most sites such as TripAdvisor and Trivago without sacrificing um, our our budget to uh, Expedia and Booking.com, which are also great uh, resources. But we're talking today about being able to drive booking directly from your website. So this is uh, this is one of the key points that I would like to offer. Uh, find find the right uh, booking engine that's right for you. And uh, I guess in uh, conclusion, just uh, wanted to uh, summarize uh, all the talking points. And uh, mobile is uh, is a reality, as uh, as Darlene and John Jerry already uh, mentioned, and it's been like that uh, for several years now, and it gets increasingly so. Um, a lot of a lot of younger travelers, uh, which uh, we found out uh, over the past several months, we we do have a shift in our personal bookings uh, at this uh, at the Harlem Village Inn uh, property. A lot a lot uh, more of younger travelers. They live on the internet. They uh, research on the internet. They buy on the internet, and specifically on their mobile devices. So do not ignore mobile. Um, uh, another. Lesson, I guess, uh, or key point, key takeaway is that you you have to fish where the fish are. You need to know where your travelers are, where they will be looking for you, and obviously your website is your is your business card. That's your first uh, first initial handshake and the eye contact with your prospective guest. So having a uh, website that's built for uh, um, all devices across the uh, across the internet. Uh, that's that's extremely important. So when travel shoppers get to your site, that should not be a closed door. Um, you don't have a second chance to make a first impression. That's that's an old uh, oldie but goodie. And uh, when uh, when um, guests arrive to your website, um, we we all may think that our website look look uh, look great, but it's uh, it's really through the eyes of your consumer or your visitor that you understand how attractive that site is. So always get a uh, second. Uh, second set of eyes, uh, possibly uh, talk to folks who uh, who are uh, in the industry um, and uh, and uh, seek out com uh, comments and hopefully compliments. And uh, after that, that's really uh, really up to you. You created your product, you created your service, your in your hospitality business, your experience, or rather your guest experience starts at your website and then it continues seamlessly. Um, Throughout their stay, and then even uh, even after their departure, it should still be a, a very memorable moment. So that's uh, that's what I have to say today. Thanks. I hope you guys found this uh, extremely educational, and uh, I wish I knew all of that a year and a half ago. Uh, thanks, Anatoly. Uh, excellent guidance for the audience, and judging by their questions, uh, you're really hitting on the key points. So to summarize, you know, don't treat mobile as an afterthought. It's just as critical to your success today as a good desktop experience and perhaps even more so as we move forward. Your guests are using their on 
on-the-go devices. So give them that good first impression as they're shopping so that they keep your property in their consideration list as they move through the shopping journey and that importantly when it comes time to make that booking they're going to remember you and choose you. Humans process visual 60,000 times faster than text. So featuring excellent imagery supplemented with helpful descriptions is really important and then uh, Joe talked about this and Anatoly talked about this. An optimized website will ensure your property not only is consistent from the desktop experience right through to the mobile device, but a mobile optimized site is also going to show up better and higher in search engine results pages because Google rewards those websites that are mobile friendly. And so it's your opportunity to increase your search engine results ranking so that people can find you. And of course, once they find you, you've increased uh, your ability to be booked. So I'm going to launch another poll. And we'd like everyone to answer this question for us. Um, what kind of content would you like to see from us in the future? Would you like to see more webinars and online events? Do you like the ebooks and the guides? Would you like on demand videos, blog articles, or all of the above? So, weighing in, again, as I said up front, just helps us shape what kind of content we develop and uh, based on what's important to you because that's the whole point of this. We want to educate you in the manner that you want to be educated. And so thanks everybody for um, for weighing in. And it looks like, uh, yeah, a lot of you still like webinars and online events and uh, it looks like 41% uh, of you like all of the above. So thank you very much for uh, sharing those thoughts with us. Just a brief word about Visly, and this is the product that Anatoly is using at Heart of the Village. Uh, it's powered by leading cloud-based technology, and Visly is a complete multi-channel, hotel-specific digital marketing system. And it really gives you control of your digital marketing to help you create, publish, update, and maintain visually stunning websites mobile sites as we talked about today, social media app plugins, and digital brochures that you can syndicate to third party travel websites. And it really makes digital marketing better because it will reduce your marketing costs because it's a low monthly subscription fee. It's easy to manage without a lot of technical skills. You don't have to wait for turnarounds from third parties who, be, who may be managing it on your behalf. You can centralize it all in a single system. And as I mentioned earlier, it's purpose built, which means that it's been built and designed with conversions in mind because we know that those direct bookings are super important. And so these websites are designed with that in mind. So more than 4,000 hotels and accommodation providers around the world are currently using it. And they're experiencing really impressive results like Anatoly was talking about. As I said up front, we're going to send you a thank you for joining us email with a link to the recording and a recap video. And you can share with your colleagues or listen to again if there are sections that you'd like to listen to again. I want to share quickly some details about an exciting new concept we're cooking up at Leonardo. In October, we're going to host our very first online conference. In fact, we are one of the first to run this type of conference in the industry. We're going to be looking at the different stages of the travel shopping journey with notable guest speakers from several high profile travel brands brands leading the conversation for each of the phases of the travel journey. So stay tuned for details and a full agenda as that will be coming to your inbox soon. And then please, if you could participate in this last poll, we'd like to understand what you thought of today's event. And we're going to understand that uh, by the way you answer this question. Based on today's content, will you attend 
a future webinar. And so if you can weigh in, again, that helps us understand, are we delivering the right content for you? Was it valuable? And um, that is really helpful to know what subjects to focus on in the future and how to organize the presentations, that sort of thing. So thank you, everyone, for weighing in. Uh, the majority of you, 90% of you said, yes, you'll join us on another webinar. So thank you. We appreciate that feedback. Folks, we're all out of time today. Uh, thank you so much, Ahmed Youssef from Amadeus your insights and Amadeus's leadership in the mobile movement is, um, is clearly uh, going in the right direction and um, thank you for sharing your insights and your guidance. Anatoly, to have uh, an innkeeper share specific and personal results with the audience is always really, really valuable. And we know that we've gotten a lot of comments in from uh, the audience saying how much they appreciated your guidance and uh, hearing from you directly. That's always really helpful to have someone who has put these strategies into practical terms and has seen results. So thank you, audience. You've been terrific. Thank you for all your questions. And uh, keep an eye on that inbox for future events. And uh, what day is this? Wednesday. It's the middle of the week. So um, enjoy the next two days and then uh, the weekend. So thanks, everybody, for joining us today. And we'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.